The history of Montenegro begins in the early Middle Ages, into the former Roman province of Dalmatia that forms present-day Montenegro. Early history Illyria before the arrival of the Slavonic peoples in the Balkans during the 6th century AD. The area now known as Montenegro was inhabited principally by the Illyrians. During the Bronze Age, the Illyrii, probably the southernmost Illyrian tribe of that time, that gave their name to the entire group were living near Skardar Lake on the border of Albania and Montenegro and neighboring with the Greek tribes, south, along the seaboard of the Adriatic. The movement of peoples that was typical of the ancient Mediterranean world ensured the settlement of a mixture of colonists, traders, and those in search of territorial conquest. Substantial Greek colonies were established on the 6th and 7th centuries BC and Celts are known to have settled there in the 4th century BC. During the 3rd century BC, an indigenous Illyrian kingdom emerged with its capital at Scutari. The Romans mounted several punitive expeditions against local pirates and finally conquered this Illyrian kingdom in the 2nd century BC, annexing it to the province of Illyricum. The division of the Roman Empire between Roman and Byzantine rule, and subsequently between the Latin and Greek churches, was marked by a line that ran northward from Scadre through modern Montenegro. As Roman power declined, this part of the Dalmatian coast suffered from intermittent ravages by various semi-nomadic invaders, especially the Goths in the late 5th century and the Avars during the 6th century. These soon were supplanted by the Slavs, who became widely established in Dalmatia by the middle of the 7th century. Because the terrain was extremely rugged and lacked any major sources of wealth such as mineral riches, the area that is now Montenegro became a haven for residual groups of earlier settlers, including some tribes who had escaped Romanization. Duclea in the second half of the 6th century, Slavs migrated from the Bay of Kota to the river of Boyana and the hinterland of it as well as surround the Skardar Lake. They formed the Principality of Dekli. Under the following missions of Cyril and Methodist, the population was Christianized. The Slavic tribes organized into a semi-independent dukedom of Duklia by the 9th century. Middle Ages After facing subsequent Bulgarian domination, the people were split as the Duklian brother Arkot split the lands among each other after 900. Prince Kaslav Klonomirovich of the Serbian Vlastomirovich dynasty extended his influence over Dekli in the 10th century. After the fall of the Serbian realm in 960, the Deklians faced a renewed Byzantine occupation through to the 11th century. The local ruler, Jorvan Vladimir Duklansky, whose cult still remains in the Orthodox Christian tradition, was at the time struggling to ensure independence. Stefan Vojislav started an uprising against the Byzantine domination and gained a huge victory against the army of several Byzantine strategists. Tuj Emily in 1042, which put to an end the Byzantine influence over the Dekli. In the 1054 Great Schism, the Dekli fell on the side of the Catholic Church. Bar became a bishopric in 1067. In 1077, Pope Gregory VII recognized Duclea as an independent state, acknowledging its king Mihailo as Rex Ducli. Later on Mihailo sent his troops, led by his son Bodin, in 1072 to assist the uprising of Slavs in Macedonia. In 1082, after numerous pleas the Bar bishopric of Bar was upgraded to an archbishopric. The expansions of the kings of the Vojislavljevich dynasty led to the control over the other Slavic lands, including Zahumlia, Bosnia and Rashka. The might of the Dekli declined and they generally became subjected to the Grand Princes of Rashka in the 12th century. Stefan Nemanja was born in 1117 in Ribnica. In 1168, as the Serbian Grand Dupan, Stefan Nemanja took Dekli. Duklia in the Nemanjic state Zeta in the Serbian Empire Zeta the Principality of Zeta was ruled by the houses of Bolsic and Krajevic. 
Zeta Zeta in the Serbian despotate after the death of Bols of III, last representative of House of Bolsic, Zeta joined the Serbian despotate, the Venetian coastal Montenegro after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. The Romanized Illyrians of the coast of Dalmatia survived the barbarian invasions of the Avars in the 6th century and were only nominally under the influence of the Slavs in the 7th and 8th centuries. In the last centuries of the first millennium, these Romanized Illyrians started to develop their own Neo-Latin language, called Dalmatian language, around their small coastal villages that were growing with maritime commerce. Venice started to take control of the southern Dalmatia around the 10th century, quickly assimilating the Dalmatian language with Venetian. By the 14th century the Republic of Venice was able to create a territorial continuity around the Bay of Cota, early modern period. The Republic of Venice dominated the coasts of today's Montenegro from 1420 to 1797. In those four centuries the area around the Catero became part of the Venetian Albania Montenegro, called in those centuries Albania Veneta. Struggle for freedom against Ottoman Empire part of today's Montenegro, called Sandak, was under Ottoman control from 1498 to 1912, while coastal Montenegro was under Venetian control and rest of Montenegro was independent from 1516. When Vladika Vavil was elected as ruler of Montenegro by its clans, and it became theocratic state, only small town centers were controlled by Ottomans, but mountains and rural area were de facto independent and controlled by Montenegrin clans, or warrior societies. Montenegrin people was divided in clans. Every adult male from clan was warrior and took part in wars. Clans were ruled by chieftains, who also were military leaders of a clan. All clan leaders met up several times a year on ZBOR in Setanj, Montenegrin capital, to make decisions of importance for nation, to solve blood feuds and to declare wars. Independent Montenegro of that time was divided in three parts. Old Montenegro, which had territory of modern-day towns of Setanj and part of Dani Lovgrad. It was core of Montenegro and Setanj was the capital. Montenegrin prince bishops lived and ruled from Setanj. BRDA included territories of northeastern Montenegro. This area was also known as the Seven Hills because it was inhabited by seven Montenegrin clans. Vasiavici, Biela Pavlisi, Paperi, Kuchi, Bratanozici, Morake and Rovskar. Old Herzegovina, an area in West Montenegro which was part of short-lived medieval state of Herzegovina. In 1514, the Ottoman-controlled territory of Montenegro was proclaimed as a separate Sanjak of Montenegro by the order of Sultan Bayezid II. The first Sanjak Beg who was chosen was Ivan Krajevic's son Staniza, who converted to Islam and governed until 1528. Despite Skenderbeg's emphasized cruelty, Ottomans did not have real power in Montenegro. Vladika Vavil was elected in 1516 as Montenegrin Prince Bishop by Montenegrin people. Time of elective Vladikas for 180 years after their first appointment. The Vladikas were elected by the clans and people, an arrangement which was ultimately abandoned in favor of the hereditary system in 1697. For the most of this period Montenegrin people was in constant struggle for existence against Ottoman Empire. A pretender to Montenegrin throne, one of the Krajevich family who had converted to Islam, invaded the Montenegro just his Staniza, 30 years before, and with the same result. Vukotic, the civil governor, repulsed the attack of Turks. Montenegrins, encouraged by the victory, besieged Jajca in modern-day Bosnia and Herzegovina, where the Hungarian garrison was closely hemmed in by the Ottoman army. The Turks were too much occupied with the Hungarian war to take revenge. Next Ottoman invasion of Montenegro took place in 1570. The national historians are silent upon the subject of the Hirak, which the invaders are said to have exacted from the inhabitants of the Free Mountains. 
The refusal of high-spirited Montenegrin clans to pay tax any longer may have been the cause of the Pasha's invasion and during the reign of Bishop Rafim, when the Turks were driven back with heavy loss in Battle of Yeskopolj in 1604, about 1500 Montenegrin warriors attacked Turkish camp on Yeskopolj field during the night, which counted 10.000 Ottoman soldiers. In 1613 Arslan Pasha gathered army of over 40.000 men to attack part of Old Montenegro. Ottoman soldiers were twice as numerous as whole population of Old Montenegro. On 10 September Montenegrins met Turkish army on the same spot Skander Bigkrajevic was defeated nearly a century ago. The Montenegrins, although assisted by some neighboring tribes, counted 4,000 and were completely outnumbered but their valor and prowess were out of proportion to their numbers. Turks embraced a disastrous defeat. Arslan Pasha was wounded, and the heads of his second-in-command and a hundred other Turkish officers were carried off and stuck on the ramparts of Setunj. The Ottoman troops retreated in disorder, many were drowned in the waters of the Morake, many more killed by Montenegrin pursuers. Much light is thrown upon the condition of Montenegro at this period and the causes of its invariable success in war even against fearful odds are, explained by the accounts of a contemporary writer, Mariano Bolitsa. This author, a patrician of Venice, residing at Cota in the early part of the 17th century, spent a considerable time in the old Montenegro, and published in 1614 a description of Setunj. At that time the whole male population of Setunj available for war consisted of 8,027 persons, distributed among the 93 villages which it contained, but these few warriors were continually practicing. The rapidity of their maneuvers was extraordinary, and for guerrilla warfare they were best warriors of Europe. The condition of the country at this period was naturally unsettled. War was the chief occupation of its inhabitants from sheer necessity, and the arts of peace languished. The printing press, so active a century earlier, had ceased to exist. The control of the prince-bishop over the five Nahi, or districts which then composed the principality, was loose, the capital itself was a mere village of a few houses. Still, even then, there was a system of local government. Each Naya was divided into tribes, or plemena, each presided over by a headman or naiz, who acted as a judge in disputes between the clansmen. 